Oh, what's that, Danny? This is sailing vessel escapade over. Please boat escapade for Marina Portet. Please, you can go to Pantone 6, Pantone 6, Pantone 6, We're on our way into a marina in Port Denia on the mainland of Spain for at least the next five days to take cover from some incoming nasty looking weather. And oh, it feels good not to be sitting this one out on anchor for a change. We can hear wind all around us now. Um, Looks like it's just about to pick up, which is going to be good fun. We're right on the end too, so we're probably going to cop the, the most of it. Doesn't seem too bad at the moment. It's 20, 20 odd knots, but we're supposed to get up to 50, so yeah. Are we supposed to get 50 here? Uh, hopefully not, but yeah, it does say that. And about 8 o'clock tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah, look at the shelves over there. It looks epic. Little bit of thunder and lightning kind of out in the water from where we are. It's such a nice feeling, like I can't explain it. I just, the relief that I feel being in a marina. Because obviously you still got things to worry about. If it gets really strong, you don't want to get smashed into the dock or into the other boats and or snap off the lines or whatever. But I don't know, there's just like a comfort in knowing that you can just step right off the boat and you usually don't have to worry as much. So I guess you can still hop off and go for a little walk and go and get things you need and whatever. And I guess like one of us could stay on the boat while the other person goes really easily. We don't have to worry about the tender and stuff. So yeah, it is really nice to be able to be in a marina. So that's the best part about the mainland of Spain, especially this time of year, it's much cheaper as well. So we paid, I think about 30 euros per night here, which is pretty good. I think it gets cheaper as we get further along. Al Marimar is like half of that price. So it'll be really good. Exciting day for Escapade, huge upgrade. That box is massive. Nala's excited for it. <laughs> Lulu's not sure about it, but she'll love it when... She's excited for it too. Look at it, yeah. Good package, hey? <laughs> <laughs> All right, open it up. This is what we've got. It's a Victron Multi Plus 2, 12 volt, 3,120 amps. So it's an inverter charger. We have an inverter charger on the boat, but it's blown up. So, <laughs> so we don't really have one. So Janae's not really excited about this upgrade because it's basically just a replacement of what we had. I but know that it'll be good once we, get, once we get our new lithium batteries, it'll be amazing. Yeah, so... It so just doesn't feel like an upgrade when it's replacing something that broke, which kind of sucks. The old, old inverter charger doesn't have a setting for life PO4s, but this one does. Also, this one has 3,000 watts, where the other one was only 2,000. So we can run more appliances at once, and also faster charge chimes. Like, so when we're running the generator or shore power, instead of charging our batteries at 40, 45 amps, we'll be charging it at 120 amps. Alright, so that's it there. Oh my god, it's huge. Oh, it's heavy. Why is it so heavy? Why is it so big? It's massive. That's what she said. Is that even going to go ah. in our, is that even going to go in our, like, up is that going to be held into that wood on our wall, probably? How, how the, the hell are we going to install this? Wow, it's pretty big, hey? I did not expect it to be that big. Oh, what? It's got like a PowerPoint in it. 
Yeah, I, I never told you that because I thought you'd go ham on it. Yeah, right. I've got PowerPoints throughout <laughs> the whole boat, but that's pretty cool. This thing's like 12 years old, so it would have been very modern at the time. So pretty easy to take this one out. Um, get your AC in, your AC out, and your positive and negative for the 12 volt. So it's pretty much take this one out and plug this one into the exact same slot. Hope, hope, for the, hope for the best. I hope anyway. <laughs> yeah. But our uh, first step is to mount this bracket. This bracket is what holds it on to the wall. Uh, I thought it'd be a bit different to this, but... A bit more sturdy. Yeah, a bit more sturdy, but this works. I'm not going to complain. Does anyone else feed off their partner's energy? What I mean by this is when Jason's productive, it usually helps me get motivated to get stuff done and vice versa. When he's being lazy, I sometimes find it really hard to get motivated. Anyway, the weather hasn't really eventuated into anything bad around here. So I decided to get outside and give our cockpit cushions a much needed clean. What I've certainly learned from living on a boat is everything wears and tears super easily. Or maybe it's just my messy boyfriend and fluffy stowaways, I don't know. But my advice is don't get light coloured cushions for indoors or out. Or if you must, then choose a colour that has a pattern in it because otherwise they'll show every spill or stain. Even our outdoor marine umbrella does this, especially once you wash off the waterproof layer. Although I've heard you can get special spray to waterproof them again, so we must do this soon. All right, so I have connected 230, 240 volt, whatever you want to call it cables this is my ac in so this will be going to my generator and shore power which runs further down the line it's already been pre-set up so this is going to be a really e easy install for me and this is my ac out where the neutral and ground go together with the ac the blue eddy so i can control the blue eddy which is also an inverter with a switch and I can change it between this inverter and the Blue Eddy, um, depending on how much power we have. So yeah, so all the positives run to a switch and then I can switch back and forth. But yeah, that's how it looks like so far. Now I've just got to hook up the DC power, so my positive and negative, and yeah, we're pretty much good to go after that. She's all installed and working. I've just got to put the cover on and all done. good is this laundry so you can pay with coins or you can download the app and they must have these around the country um, and then you put in the location of where you are and then you can load money on with PayPal or your card and then you pick the machine and you can actually pick like your wash and your temperature and everything on the app and the machine you're going to use pay for it and then you just pop your clothes in and click start and it includes your detergent and all that stuff but yeah so easy and then it just sends you a notification when your washing's done also shows which machines at the time are available or being used so you don't have to come here and waste your time very very cool
I just came outside. I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And then like I looked across and noticed it was a rat and like quite a big one and just squealed. And then the thing ran to hide. First time I've ever had a rat on a boat that I know about anyway. And then it wouldn't leave. It was like, I felt bad for it because I'm not going to be cruel to it. But like it tried to like hide behind this down the bottom and then it was sitting there for ages because I screamed. It was like freaked out. Anyway, then I'm like, I'm going to get a broom so I can just try and like nudge it to get off the boat. <laughs> And then it ended up climbing up this. And I'm like, oh my God, it's going to go in the tender or something. We're not going to be able to get it. Anyway, and then like, I think because it was, I squealed again because it ran and I like jumped up onto the seats. <laughs> then it got scared and it was like, all right, I'm out of here. So it climbed back down, went along and went along some of the rope. It fully climbed the rope and then went back along the passerelle and now it's sitting on the other side of the dock. So I'm going to try and like move it away from our boat. There he is, just hiding. Oh, I feel bad for it. I definitely scared it. I know pe people hate rats, but it's just another little living being. Can't help it, everyone hates them. Yay, we can leave. Jason's got the package. It's delayed a few days, so we had to spend more days than we wanted to in the marina and had a chance to leave. We finally got it. Um, I'm doing like any of this for the first time because I did my course two over two years ago. Jason's just chucked me in the deep end. I left the dock. I haven't done that pretty much ever either. Yeah, you did well. Yeah, but there's like no wind. Um, so that's the fuel dock just there. I don't know if there's anyone over there. Like, I don't even know if it's open. I'm sure it will be. Thanks, honey. Literally, you couldn't have done it any better. I'm like so chuffed with myself. <laughs> that like put me in such a better mood for today. I was in such a crap mood this morning. And that just made me feel really proud of myself. <laughs> I think I got very lucky. It was a bit of a fluke. There's no wind. It was a really easy dock. There was fenders everywhere already. Can't go too wrong. Just fuel everywhere. Oopsie. I am so chuffed with myself. <laughs> I was having a bit of a bad morning this morning. I was in a bit of a weird mood because we've been talking about like what's going to happen to do with this Atlantic crossing. We don't know. We're still like really in limbo because it's just basically just being able to afford anything. We're really pushing it financially to get everything that we need for the crossing. And I personally don't want to go from Gibraltar without having any of it. Jason's obviously suggested, oh, you know, you can get some of the stuff in Canaries, but Gibraltar to the Canaries is like typically the craziest out of the three lakes that you're gonna do. So I definitely wanna be ready with like all of our medical kit and everything like that. So yeah, the next few days we'll be telling on our decision. Um, when we get to our Merrimar, we've got a rigging inspection booked. So obviously if he tells us that we really need the rigging replaced, then that's our decision not to go because we can't afford to replace it like straight away. Um, also, we're having a lot of trouble, unfortunately, trying to get our batteries shipped um, from the US. So we've been waiting all year so that we could get them shipped to Gibraltar because Gibraltar is tax free and it's gonna save us a lot of money. However, unfortunately, because they obviously have to go on a ship and not by plane, it's proving quite hard to organize. So. Um, I guess today or tomorrow, hopefully we should find out an answer on that as well. And then we're just gonna have to decide what we're doing. So yeah, but anyway, I was very happy with uh, just even my like driving out of the, off the dock and then going onto the fuel dock. <laughs> right in the deep end, hey, off the dock. Yeah, he's like, all right. And then he's like, oh, you, you know, you gotta use a bow thrust. And I'm like, why are you telling me this? Are you expecting me to go on the fuel dock? And he's like, yeah, you might as well. I'm like, oh, okay. But, we picked like perfect oh. conditions for me to oh yes we are uh, just realized that we've left the tender up really high and we don't have it like strapped on so it doesn't swing so better fix that
We're en route from Port Denia to Almerimar, which is a 230 nautical mile sail away or about 30 hours. It's unfortunately going to be an upwind sail with some gross swell for this afternoon. But it's our only gap in the constant bad weather we've been dished recently, so sometimes you've just got to deal with it. We have a forecast of about 20 to 25 knots today, but calming down during the night. And tomorrow, probably quite a bit of motoring. But we need to get to the marina in our Merrimar as soon as possible, as we'll be arriving just before some really nasty wind hits the area. It's starting to get hairy now. Jesus. Isn't it? I've been in conditions like this for a little while. Washy. Nala's been sick. Poor little baby. Lulu's okay, I'm on slap. And it's about to like absolutely bucket down. Well, it's bucketing down back there. Oh, this is like disgusting. about 2 3 p.m. yesterday um, yeah I'm not feeling the best I woke up feeling pretty crappy yesterday and then when we left the dock I was feeling much better because I was proud of myself for docking the boat got myself in a good mood and then the swell was just horrible yesterday Arvo so I ended up actually being sick for the first time ever aboard our boat I've only ever been sick on another boat once and it's because I was hungover. And I was sick twice, so... You've come pretty close to being sick though. You've I've felt, felt yeah, like I've felt seasick, but I've never actually come to like vomiting, so... Hopefully this isn't the start of something. Oh, I think it might be. Well, I hope you're not pregnant. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. I think it might be like... No, no. The seasickness seems to be getting worse as we're getting further west in the med. So I think it's just like... I don't know, maybe the bigger, more rolling swell or something. But yeah, I'm feeling, I'm not gonna be feeling too good when we do this crossing. Um, at the start anyway, so. Um, yeah, but it calmed down during the night and we've pretty much been motoring ever since. So I feel okay, but I need to get something in my tummy. So I'm gonna have Jason's making me some toast because I don't want to go downstairs and make it myself feel sick again. Little Miss has sat outside with one of us the entire night. She freaks out like as soon as you lock her inside. She just howls and howls and howls till you uh, let her out. But she doesn't play. She just wants to sit on your lap and sleep and she gets really, really needy. So it was fine it was just that like we have to get up and check the AIS like every 15 minutes check around us so we kept disturbing us I think she sales. yeah probably had a really bad sleep but anyway um Nala was good she slept downstairs with whoever was downstairs and yeah we'll probably be motoring for the rest of the day and get in late like very late tonight so whether we go into the marina or just anchor out the front and go into the morning, I guess, on the side. Our poor engine is having a massive workout. Yeah. The biggest one it's ever had. Yeah. Hopefully it's all good, eh? Well, hopefully we get there. We've got enough fuel. Didn't you say you think we only had like 30 hours of fuel? Oh, okay. That's good. I was going to say we're pushing it. Good old Vegemite on toast to make you feel better, eh? We'll see you next week for a bit of a different episode where we talk you through our struggles with the Atlantic crossing preparations and a big decision that's been weighing heavy on us. This one's a difficult one.